Goed, dan zijn we dan met de pitspost. En uh, ja, zoals beloofd, het is toch rondgekomen. We hebben het voor elkaar. Ze zitten gezellig met elkaar te keuvelen. A very warm welcome to both Jos Verstappen en Michael Schumacher. Uh, Michael, I've got... You set another record. We've had 3,300 questions for this. I don't think we've got time for that. <laughs> I was just going to ask whether we have to go through. <laughs> no, I, I, we, we've t I've taken about a seven or eight, which go between the two of you. One question, my first one comes from me. When we asked you to do this, you said, yes, okay, fair enough, I want to do it. But only if Jos is there as well. Why? <laughs> Normally it's only one guest. But it's fine, it's fine, and he's here, so. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's obviously good that, that uh, we can see each other together again, because it has been quite a while we haven't been able to see each other. So there's always good reasons uh, to do things like that. Well, fair enough. Um, I'll make it easy for you. We've kept everything in, we've kept everything in English. Jos and I will talk in English as well. Most of the questions are for, for both of you. First one comes from a guy named Frans. He lives in Loosdrecht. <laughs> <laughs> Frans, not, it's not your dad. It's not your dad. Uh, and he says, if two friends discuss their biggest passion, every detail will pass every now and then. With the friendship you have, can you really discuss all technical details? Will you have a good suspension? Do you talk about those really things, or do you avoid those conversations? And he says here, or you just discuss the nice female roundings that pass both of you on the beach. Don't know where he got that. How does that work? Do you want to start, or...? Yeah, you um, start. I mean, we don't go into details, I think. We just talk brief, briefly about racing. Yeah. I mean, this year we, we haven't uh, talked about anything, so... Uh, no, but it's just uh, very briefly in, over Formula One cars. And the rest is more friendship, family, children. But when you were teammates, it was different. Uh, certainly it was different because there it's necessary that you exchange detailed information when we have been working in Bennington together. But, you know, we, we spend quite a lot of time together uh, so far and that time we do spend together we need to discuss go-kart stuff because it's so ex intense what we do with go-kart that the time runs out and we haven't been able to pass to the subject of Formula One. I've got a question and, on that and later actually on. about beach, we don't spend much time on the beach right. so there's no no chance for girls to run around us. Yeah, because that's what I've except heard. our own ones. <laughs> that's what I heard about you as well. If you go to the beach you don't like it after three days you need to do you do stuff. You can't lie around on the beach, can you? Uh, well, last time we were on the beach I think it was in uh, Malaysia where we had to play football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, with my friend Raymond there as well. He right. was completely destroyed. <laughs> he got kicked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, that's how no, it works. Not kicked, uh, <laughs> only exhausted, I think. Okay. <laughs> Next one comes from a girl, Claudia Zeppin. She lives in Amsterdam and she says, Hi guys, rumor has it that you often cart against each other. I was wondering, what's the score at the moment? Can you still surprise each other with some spectacular moves? And she hopes that you guys will be racing against each other again in Formula 1 next year, so it's more, more to you. Yeah, What's the score? What's the score? I don't know the score. I only know the last time. The last time I was the loser. We were in Genk in, okay. in, uh, in the rain and, uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think I learned something. <laughs> nah, it's good. I mean, we're always challenging for each other in the yeah. dry and in the wet. And uh, last time for me was good in the wet. I know Gang a bit better than Actually, he did. was good with the left hand. Well, I mean, I went faster, you went you faster. Were fast, so I saw that, I went faster again. You went faster again. <laughs> it was really pushing each other. Yes. How, impo how important is karting to still have? Because people tell me that the feeling on, on a real good kart is as close as possible to racing an F1 car. Is that true? The speed you load to the ground, the direct movement. Of the, you have no downforce, no? No. And it's just but, uh, I mean, tires and... I, I, don't, I don't think it, it doesn't matter any what kind of race car or go-kart you drive, you're still on the limit. And I think that's good. Of course, Formula One is a bit quicker and, and a bit tougher on your body, but uh, I think racing and whatever kind of go-kart, or you name it, or a racing car, I think is good. Michael, is karting also fitness? Is karting about fitness? In these days, yes, because uh, you have so much rubber in the race uh, on the circuit that, especially the arms, uh, they get uh, tired. Because in, in, in Formula One, in these days, we have power steering. So mm -hmm. it's not so tiring for the arms, but it's tiring for the rest of the body. But uh, in karting... Yeah. Power steering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're strong. I mean, you don't need it. You, you say power steering and you say, if I look at you after the race, if you step out of the car, there's no sweat whatsoever. 
if he's done five laps in a car, he's red like a lobster. I know that. How does that go? <laughs> no, I always used to call him my uh, tomato. You should make some advertise for tomato. I remember it's, in Brazil. It's, yeah, it's but whatever kind it, of sport we do. Yeah. He never sweats. Never. And I sweat like a pig, let's say, like that. <laughs> but it's just a type of I, body. Exactly. Uh, the, there is human beings that sweat more than others with uh, being the, having the same fitness. I mean, that's, that's not a doubt. That's why I'm bigger than you. It's got nothing to do with food. <laughs> no, that's a different matter. I mean, but he is fit. I mean, we train together and uh, he sweats while we do the same sort of exercise and I don't. And yeah. it means that certain humans uh, sweat more than others. For people who don't understand Formula One, they think it's an easy thing, but it's not. Yeah, but you said it's only me, the rest is sweating, so then I guess they know <laughs> what, what's happening. True, 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 true. All right, we go to another girl, her name is Jutta Frey. She lives, this is a nice little city in Holland. Can you try that? Uh, Hippolytus Hoof. Hippolytus Hoof. Oh, yeah. never heard of oh, yeah. for us. That's in Holland. Oh, yeah, that's in Holland. Is it? I'll first explain that she's got the Vragen der Woche, question of the week. That betekent to Utah that dit de vraag van de week is dat jij van de volgende week race report elke week op je deur moet krijgen. Daar mag je blij mee zijn. The question is in German. So we swap to German for a sec. And maybe you can do it. Schön, dass du dich im holländischen Fernsehen mit Jos sehen lässt. Was mich interessiert ist, dass du, ah, du hast schon zwei Teams zur Weltspitze verholfen. Denkst du, dass so etwas auch zum Beispiel mit Minardi gehen würde? Also, back to English. Back to English. Back to English. Okay. <laughs> so whether the same what has happened with Benetton and Ferrari would be able to happen uh, would that be possible? with Minardi. If the same people there in Ferrari would be in Minardi, yes. I mean, but they are not. I mean, it depends it, from the budget, I guess. Uh, yeah, they need the money, the same sort of money, yes, <laughs> to pay the people to stay there, <laughs> no doubt. But the point is that it's the environment, it's it's the whole team. It's not a single person. It's not uh, uh, Ross Braun or Rory or Jean Todt or myself. It's all together and with all all the number of hundreds of people we we have around us. And that's if you do have them the right spirit, then you do it with every team. How did you create it? Did you did you talk to them, to come with me? Did you have to lure them into it? Or did they say, well, he's there, I want to be there as well? How, how much of that comes I from think, you personally as well? I, I wouldn't want to put uh, too much on my personal side because people, they look, they don't work every day with me. Mm -hmm. uh, in Formula One, we drivers, I think we have sort of the best job. We turn there at the weekend, we come several times for testing, but the engineers, the mechanics, they have to spend day and night, Saturday and Sunday, in the factory and work very hard to give us the best package. And uh, they sort of have to know whether the environment is the right environment for them. For sure, if they have sort of guarantee for a certain amount of success, it helps. And maybe I was a sort of guarantee. Oh, very good. Is that one of the reasons, Jos, that sometimes in Eros there were more problems because the environment kept changing and new things kept changing? And if you look back that, now, if you, because you, you, I think you're it a bit has further to do away with from it, yes, and, and as well the facilities and, you know, to keep the, the good people together, and that was always the problem. Mm. I mean, if, you, if we had somebody good, uh, Tom was difficult to them or he, he couldn't keep them because there wasn't enough money or you know I just want to say if you don't pay the, the good people go <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> natural that's, right. Right. that's why I'm still that's here. why I'm gone <laughs> <laughs> Renze de Graaf uh, lives in Dokkum he asked a question this, together with a friend, friend of his Peter Walsweer what do you both think about uh, there's a lot of going on about tobacco sponsoring here in Belgium and whatever but the, the risk now is that the Belgium Grand Prix as a spa may drop out of the candle in the future. What do you think about this? By the way, he also asked you, do you know where he can get the cap with the five stars and the 2,000 on the front? There's one really close, I can nick it. Shall we first go to the first question? Yeah, first, first, first Spa. What, what if Spa drops from the calendar? What's that, what does I that think, do to this point? I mean, everybody, all the drivers lost to, to drive in Spa because of Eau Rouge, the, the long circuit, the fast corners. It's just a, a driver circuit. And, uh, and I think it would be a shame if, if, if you, they couldn't race here anymore. And, uh, yeah, I think everybody will be sad. Yeah. You agree? So, yeah, no, I can't uh, agree more. But honestly, the last two or three years there has been discussions of Spa disappearing and we're still here. So... Should be politics probably. Maybe. Maybe Burning is trying to increase his salary or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never know. All right. Where can he get the cap? Well, uh, in the shops. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Apparently they're not there in Holland yet, so you, maybe you can make him a retailer in Holland. <laughs> I have nothing to do in the market. Yeah. So. <laughs>
<laughs> so you do work together yeah. then. Okay, Nita Bratschin lives in the, in the Hague. Her husband travels a lot as well, and she says, how do you make time for your family, you both, during a Formula One season? How do you do that? I think he has a lot of time now. Huh? Yeah, he does. Yeah, it's no, no problem. But during the Formula One season, that, that, I mean, that's for me, back. my life never has been uh, as busy as uh, Michael's, I guess. Um, True. Still, you know, you have your races. You have to be on the track on Thursday. We didn't test as much as, as he does. So for me, it's, it's a that. lot easier than for yeah. Michael. Yeah. And uh, for me, in two weeks, it's five days at home. So it's not yeah, too bad. How do, you, how do you do it? But how do you give... The, the Americans have a nice expression for that. How do you give quality time to your family? How do you do that? I think uh, we are in the luxury that the time we have at home, we can give 100% to our family. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have a have normal, a normal job, yeah. uh, job, you go out in the morning, come back in the evening, hardly you see your kids. It's, it's different with us. We're three, four days on the road. Then we for two, three days at home. We again for two, three days on the road. Then we again at home. So it's, it's a, a reasonable schedule where you have a nice and good family life. At least that's what was important to me. And Ferrari has been able to juggle the schedule in the way that, that I don't have too many side activities. Mm -hmm and uh, have private time because the amount I spend maybe more testing yours had to probably uh, go for sort of sponsor functions mm -hmm. in smaller teams mm -hmm. that's what you have to do and I think they're much more tough than uh, yeah, doing testing, testing or racing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like being a dad? Is it good? Oh fantastic good. Yeah. yeah well I know I know. But. I mean, <laughs> yeah. All right um, this one is from Tom Fahner he lives in Rijswijk and he says it said that most of today's drivers were also bit engineers. Huh? Um, Sorry? What? Being a today's driver, you're also a bit of an engineer. Uh, how do you two, as for him, the best driver in the world, do acquire this en engineering knowledge? Do you do that by experience or by study? So he thinks there's much more engineering than just driving. Or do you say, well, we just have the guys to do that, and I tell them what I feel, and they explain that to the engineering side. What do you know about your car? In a way, that's a, what do you know about the technical I side? I think of your it car? is important to understand the principle, mm -hmm. but. Uh, in all honesty, what is available on electronic information and equipment, I have honestly to say I don't know how you achieve all, all the functions. I know what they do for me and what I would like them to do for me. And I can, I guess, express myself enough to the engineers uh, so it improves so. the situation. Yeah. And that's the important thing, that you have the basic... Uh, mechanical understanding of a car. Mm -hmm. I mean, we both have been doing go-karts for so long, which gives you the Helps. basic idea already. And then we go through sort of various stages and uh, make our personal life experience. And, and you feel as well if something is wrong, even, you know, if you're driving, you know how the car should be. If it is good and if there's just slightly, slightly you're wrong, you notice the thing and then you explain what you hear or what you feel and they know exactly where I have to find. But it's also said that sometimes you hear things in the engine. They say, the engine sounds whatever, and then the engineer... No, it, it is important that what you're saying, that, that you, he, you, you have to feel and notice if yeah. something is wrong, and it is even better if you can give clear explanation on yeah. what could be the reason for, uh, for what you feel. So it's much more easy for them to arrive at the target. Yeah. Final question, Hans Zwiers from Duiven. You're both a father. What would you do if one of your kids says, I want to be a Formula One racer? Would you encourage it or would you say, get it out of your head? Don't want to do this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, we have never had any sort of argument in, in, our, in our friendship. I think this could be the first time we could have some argument if our two would be uh, racing yeah. each other. Because you want not very to be similar, Very similar age, so uh, for sure they will compete to each other if they if they grow up and uh, decide to go into go-karts. Okay, but like I think I think horse riding or golf is a much better sport for our kids, isn't it? Yeah, or play tennis. Yeah. Dangerous play golf. as well. Horse riding is dangerous. If you drop yeah. off a horse, you're in, in deep trouble. No, but for me, if it really wants to... I mean, Formula One is, is very far away and you never know what happens after yeah. 15 years. But if I really will help them whatever he wants to play. If he wants to play football, I do everything I can to get the best team or whatever. Oh and it's the God. same in go-kart or tennis or whatever. Yeah. Well, thanks very much both for your time. Uh, time flies when we're having fun. So we always say it's about 12, 13 minutes. We've been chatting away already. Um, lots of luck here this weekend in Spa. Lots of luck Thank with you. whatever Hoop is doing for you. And I hope uh, he'll be successful. Because I like him, man. 
Oh yeah, we all do. I mean, Good. if you see the number of fans he has around uh, the world, it's, it's with the, very... With the nice t-shirts. Uh, I don't know if you see them. But... No, I haven't seen them, uh, but uh, I don't them. look at these things at least. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's it's quite amazing. And I'm, yeah. I would be obviously more than happy if Jos is back uh, for personal reasons as much as for business reasons and uh, for his own uh, comfort, obviously. Time will tell. All right. Thanks very much. Okay.